So today we'll be talking about Celexa, generic name citalopram, and its effect on anxiety. Just a quick disclaimer before this video, I just want to say that this is a mainly informational video. This is just information that I have compiled based on my research on the internet and from in class. So I hope you, you find this helpful, but please don't use this as your only source of information. Celexa is usually used to treat depression, PTSD, OCD, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, also known as social phobia, panic disorder, and PMDD. And depression is listed in bold because it is the FDA approved use for the drug. However, Celexa has been found to be used effectively against anxiety. So we'll be taking more of a deconstructionist approach to anxiety. Now what this means is that we can take all the symptoms of anxiety disorders and sort of boil them down to two distinct loops, the fear loop and the worry loop. Now while this might seem sort of simplistic to some people, what it allows us to do is to treat each of the loops instead of treating all the individual symptoms, which lessens the amount of medication that the individuals have to take, which lessens the hassle uh, of dealing with these disorders. And based on the symptoms your anxiety seems to be displaying, usually anxiety can be categorized into a fear-based or worry-based anxiety. So here we have an image depicting the brain areas associated with, with each of the loops. For the fear loop, we have the anterior cingulate cortex, or the ACC, which is associated with executive function, the orbitofrontal cortex, which is associated with impulse inhibition, and the amygdala, which is associated with strong emotions, especially fear. For the worry loop, we have the DLPFC, or the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is also called the governor of the brain because it heads off most of the executive functions, as well as the striatum and the thalamus, which are mostly associated with sensory relays. Selexa belongs to the drug class of SSRIs, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Most SSRIs are FDA approved to be used as antidepressants, but also work well as anxiolytics because of the way they work on the micro scale. The way that SSRIs work is that they, they increase the amount of available serotonin in the brain. Now what this means is that SSRIs don't necessarily produce more serotonin, they just allow your brain to use your current levels of serotonin more effectively. Now a drawback of SSRIs is that, is that they are slow working. They may take up to about two weeks for the desired effects to kick in. Um, contrast that with another drug class, uh, benzodiazepines, which are also used as anxiolytics and antidepressants, um, which are very fast working. Um, however, SSRIs work effectively on both fear and worry-based anxiety, whereas benzodiazepines only work on fear-based anxiety, and that's sort of rooted in the, uh, the way that they affect the neurotransmitters in the brain. Another big plus of, this, of the SSRI drug class is that it's very well tolerated, and usually the side effects that people experience when taking them aren't really that major. Um, and also there's a very low abuse potential. Uh, contrast that with the benzodiazepines, which uh, are frequently abused and have a high abuse potential. So this is an image to help depict how SSRIs work on the micro scale. Uh, so this image here is of a synapse. Um, in this case, this is a normal healthy synapse. So here serotonin will exit the presynaptic neuron into the synapse and bind to a postsynaptic receptor. Uh, now what this binding does is that it sort of triggers a reaction in the postsynaptic neuron which leads to the cognitive effects of uh, serotonin, usually affected with an elevated mood. Um, after that reaction takes place, serotonin detaches from that receptor and floats around in the synapse and usually is taken back into the presynaptic cell via the serotonin reuptake port. Now what SSRIs do, because some anxieties are associated with a lack of serotonin in the synapse, what SSRIs will do is that they'll block these reuptake ports. So the serotonin will exit the presynaptic neuron, bind to the postsynaptic receptors, but they won't be able to get back into the, the presynaptic neurons via the reuptake ports, meaning that uh, there's more available serotonin in the synapses, meaning that they'll bind to the receptors more, and you'll have um, a, a heightened effect of the serotonin binding. So as far as the dosage and use for Celexa, typically when SSRIs are used as anxiolytics, they require a bit higher dosages than if they were used as antidepressants. So for Celexa, the dosages usually range from about 20 to 60 milligrams per day for it being used as an anxiolytic. However, most people seem to respond best to about 40 milligrams a day. And the half-life of the drug is about 35 hours, meaning that it would take 175 hours to completely clear from the body. So I think there are some pretty clear reasons why Celexa might be more advantageous to take um, than other anxiolytics or other SSRIs. 
For example, Selexa is generally more tolerable than other SSRIs or anxiolytics. Um, as I said before, SSRIs are one of the more tolerable drug classes, and for Selexa to be one of the most tolerable of those SSRIs is really saying something. Uh, and what, where that really um, manifests itself is with the elderly, uh, who have generally more frail bodies who aren't able to take the side effects as well. So Selexa, with its lessened side effects, uh, is, are really, is really advantageous in that aspect. Also, sexual dysfunction, which is a big drawback of taking SSRIs, is uh, not as present uh, as a side effect for Selexa, which is, I guess, a big plus for some people. Another big plus is that it's cheaper than most other SSRIs, and the prices can be listed here for the pills. So, as far as side effects, this is a list of some side effects that may occur. Uh, not everyone experiences these side effects. Some people don't even experience any side effects at all. So this is, this is just a list of observed side effects. Sexual dysfunction, though not as prominent as in other SSRIs. Gastrointestinal irritation. Insomnia. Flattened affect. Autonomic issues. Slight sedation. And this is a pretty big one. An initial increase in anxiety. So based on the way that SSRIs work in the brain, some, some patients do experience an initial increase in anxiety. Now this doesn't mean that the drug isn't working. It just means that it just takes a bit of time to kick in. Uh, you, your brain will adjust itself to, uh, to maximize the effect of the drug, so the, the initial anxiety will go away. And these are some rare side effects, including seizures, induction of mania, and suicidal ideation. Selexa belongs to the drug class of SSRIs, or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. Most SSRIs are FDA approved to be used as antidepressants, but also work well as anxiolytics because of the way they work on the micro scale. The way that SSRIs work is that they, they increase the amount of available serotonin in the brain. Now what this means is that SSRIs don't necessarily produce more serotonin, they just allow your brain to use your current levels of serotonin more effectively. Now a drawback of SSRIs is that, is that they are... So some warnings associated with the drug are an increased suicidality in children, teens, and young adults with major depressive disorder. Now how this can be dealt with is just to monitor these people initially, just to make sure that they're alright until the drug kicks in. Also, don't take Selexa, or any SSRI for that matter, with MAOIs, which are another drug used against depression sometimes. Also, use caution when treating patients with a history of bipolar disorder, or with a history of seizures, and consult your physician before altering the prescription or discontinuing Selexa. So today we'll be talking about Selexa, generic name citalopram, and its effect on anxiety. Just a quick disclaimer before this video, I just want to say that this is a mainly informational video. This is just information that I've compiled based on my research on the internet and from in class.